The Office of Overseas Buildings Operations, OBO, operates and maintains all of the State Department's facilities worldwide. We're, we're sort of like the landlord, right? Uh, and your landlord can be sensitive or your landlord can be uh, insensitive. We chose to be very, very sensitive. Uh, we think that the, our impact and our opportunities are uh, substantial, that our buildings can uh, perform, perform a platform for echo, echo, echo diplomacy. A lot of people, a lot of traffic are, are, are of influential people are coming into our buildings, and if we can um, display not only our, our prowess, our capability, but also energize them to move, we think that that's an important part of, of why we're there. Uh, the buildings that we're producing now are very small and, and some quite large. This is a project that uh, was the result of a, a conservation uh, uh, embassy design competition. Uh, last year it will be the new U.S. Embassy uh, for London. A very, very important partner, perhaps one of our, our, our greatest in the world. Uh, we are leaving a very uh, historic, beautiful building. That's something that is hard to do. Uh, as I told uh, Madam Mayor, uh, sometimes, you know, taking a historic building and using it for an embassy may be a misuse of, of a good property and may be better in the hands of a museum or a law firm or something like that. So we're very realistic about the impact that we have on buildings. Uh, and, and, and what we can do. This building is, is really state of the art. Uh, no rooftop uh, green roofs. We went to green balconies. Uh, we introduced a lake that gives you also security protection but also acts as a cooling tower. Um, a lot of green is, is left there. Uh, and it will be really a laboratory uh, for how an office building can become a power plant. We, we're striving for a net zero. But, you know, some of the benchmarks that are out there are less important as moving forward and let's see how far you get. Um, uh, in this particular case, I wanted to talk about how you get started with this. And I talked about it being a youth movement. I think there are two key elements that have to be in place if you want to really institute a change uh, in, in your own organization or publicly. One is you have to communicate broadly. Uh, and we introduced uh, almost eight years ago uh, a green guide, uh, which is sort of a, a user's manual for people who are in our embassies, what you can do now that you're in a sustainable building to continue to allow it to perform the way it's intended to, to perform. And also little things that you can do at home, educating your children. Uh, what, do you, what do you do at, uh, for the schools? What are we doing about our churches? What are we doing about our museums? What are we doing about our libraries? This is, this is a, a niche that uh, can be a, uh, produce lessons for other public buildings to follow uh, as the change takes place. So we give these out, these are online, uh, all of our new diplomats get this. Uh, I have given uh, a copy of a flyer, you'll, you'll find some on the, uh, on the side there that will give you a little more detail about our program and we'll give you a website where you can get to that green guide. So communication of the goal and the little steps that individuals and groups can do is very, very important and this started a decade ago. Then you have to have a place where you try it out, where you test it. Because let's face it, we all get into this and we're wondering, is this really going to work? Can I really um, cover a, a U.S. Embassy building with PV panel because we're about to replace the facade anyway? This would be a good way to go, but that's not very easy to do. There are people that tell you, oh, now you're uh, covering the building with a force field that can be used as an antenna. Uh, green roofs are in the way. So you constantly have to find ways around the, uh, the impediments that are there. Uh, and this is the challenge that, that, that we have in, in our building program. We've had a decade of progress now. We have built, in the last eight years, 77 new embassy compounds, not one building, but a complex of seven or eight buildings that includes marine guard houses, warehouses, annexes, and shops, all uh, as sustainable as possible. As I said, some are very large, some are very prestigious, uh, and some, some are quite small. Uh, here are a few small ones. Uh, in Sofia, uh, Bulgaria, Panama City, Panama, Johannesburg, South Africa, and Brazzaville, uh, all LEED certified buildings. Uh, and all 77 buildings were built with the same template, standard embassy template, so that they're all LEED equivalent. But we went through the steps for, for these four uh, and, and achieved LEED gold in Brazzaville. We're very, very proud of that. So that means about 100 embassy buildings have been built in the last 10 years that are LEED silver uh, or equivalent. Finally, 
Part of the communication, as I said, it really must come from the top down. You heard from, from a great champion that we have, uh, Ambassador Oreck, there are many others, uh, not only ambassadors, but also the rank and file general service officers or facility managers uh, that, that really uh, embrace and push the program. Uh, and they not only communicate, but they also demonstrate technologies that, that uh, are American technologies and world technologies that we can use. Uh, this is uh, closing remarks about uh, GDI, its, its, uh, its impact, it's continuing to grow. We hope to uh, continue to lead by example, uh, keeping the earth uh, for diplomacy. Thank you.